This is going to go well. Anyway, uh, hi, my name is Mike, and I'm the um, chief catalyst at the Old Ways Podcast. I set shit on fire, I kill people when it's necessary, and mostly, mostly, I work very, very hard to be entertaining. And that may be because I have an inner madness I'd like to share, uh, but either way, hopefully, you enjoy it. So the format of today's show is sort of the first we've really ever done, which is a live show. Uh, we don't normally play live, except sometimes we occasionally uh, play around on other folks' streams. So this will be as uh, raw and unedited as we've likely been in a long time, which is fantastic because who knows what will happen. The best part is, is there is no scenario, nothing is pre-written, everything is happening live. So that should be an added fun. Uh, the bonus for you in the audience is you will have an opportunity to affect what happens to our players today through your own participation. So something that the podcast does through its Patreon is something called the Hand of Fate. And so the Hand of Fate allows certain backers to cast votes for or against certain characters. Not players, characters. Very important to what <laughs> Some, some players may feel like they're picked on a little more than others, and that's okay, because sometimes they are. Um, and I always, I always like to reinforce with the players, if the hand of fate is being picked on you, it's because the audience has recognized that you are an excellent player, and they want to see what you have to offer. And I think that that's a huge compliment. So if, I don't know, say Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy from the old Orient Express game gets three negative hand of fates in a row, it's because they really, really like the way Rena plays. It Lady suffers. Elizabeth. Yes. <laughs> right. Like to see me suffer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, and we all do. Anyway, um, you're going to get a chance as we go to help us build this house. So the premise of today's game is that our characters, our investigators, are being asked to investigate a haunted house. Uh, it is a modern setting game. We won't necessarily put a hard, fast rule on what year it is because it's sort of immaterial for what we're doing. We'll just say that it's a present day game. Uh, and as I would do for all of my games, uh, any game that I run for the Old Ways Podcast is considered a mature game. So if there are, uh, there aren't really any con specific content warnings that I would give for this, I would just say that uh, obviously we're entering a haunted house and some things are gonna happen. Uh, so if you get squeamish, uh, there's the door, <laughs> right? <laughs> also, lots of swearing because I'm playing. <laughs> well, I'm running, so I mean, true. <laughs> yeah, lots of swearing. Uh, we are a mature show, so it's important to, to take that into account. When you participate in helping out, you have the chance to win a fabulous prize. And some of the prizes are going to be given out by uh, another cast member, Allie, who's here in the front row. Uh, she's going to help sort of sort. We have stickers, we have magnets. Uh, and then for some of the larger prizes we have, we have dice tubes, we have some elder dice we're going to give away, and then I have a pin from the Miss Connick University I'm going to give away too. So just all sorts of fun stuff, and that's no cost to you just for showing up and having fun, okay? So as we begin, I would ask, as I always do in any game, does anyone want to get out? Maybe. No. <laughs> <laughs> Do not want to get out. Uh, so yes, around, it's a, 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 round, a round of applause for our players. Uh, That's a lot of dice. It is. I'm going to probably need them all. <laughs> all right. So the date is February 7th. And something terrible has happened in Bedford, Massachusetts. The terrible thing that has happened is an, an older family in the city has had a death. Uh, a very lucrative, a very well-to-do family. Its patriarch, we'll call him Jeremy DeWert, has passed. The DeWert family gained most of its money in the run-up to the Civil War. They did a lot when it came to railroads, traditionally, they did a lot when it came to uh, ammunition, guns, and then eventually they divested themselves into the surrounding transportation industry. And so 
they have an enormous family fortune that is, in a sense, up for grabs because no descendant of the Dwork family has made themselves known. And so in the next 24 hours, the entirety of the estate will be moved to, to state control. Unless, of course, some particular people can uncover the lineage of the Dwork family, which is said to be sealed inside of Jeremy Dwork's <coughs> house, the manse that Dwork's keep on the hill. And so we're going to open our camera with uh, a shot of a very spooky Victorian era house. Uh, dark shutters, even a dark paint, some untended bushes, some gravel drive sort of weaves its way down towards the main roads. It hasn't been kept up for a period of time. And the three of you deserve an introduction. So as I would not normally say, to my left, <laughs> give us your player name, their, their pronouns, and your character, their pronouns if you'd like, and then what their occupation is. So hey y'all, I'm Rena. my pronouns are they, them, and you would know me from the Horror in the Orient Express and Vampire the Masquerade. And uh, today I am playing Mac Vaughn, he, him, and am I supposed to say anything else about him? I think you can give, uh, an, uh, I think giving his occupation to the audience is perfectly fine. Oh, if I must. Uh, Mac is a bit of a, well, he repossesses things <laughs> without <laughs> other people's knowledge, <laughs> and then uh, passes those things on to other people for money. Hmm. So you're a purveyor of goods. Exactly. It's yeah. just, I get them from places people don't <laughs> think they would come from. That's all. Makes sense to me, and to your left. It's me, Miranda. Um, I'm playing Daphne, whose last name I can't remember from Scooby-Doo, um, and she, her, and her, she's a sexy librarian. <laughs> <laughs> That's Daphne, redundant. Daphne the sexy librarian. Uh -huh. So for all of these... Like, she has glasses and her hair's up, but you know... When the hair comes down and the glasses come off, she can get it. It's hot. Okay. Right. Well, we'll be careful with the Dewey Decimal System around you. Uh, and then last, but also certainly not least. Hello. I'm your friend, Nate. I am going to be playing Silas Corn Mutton III. I had to take that name for three generations. Uh, my occupation, according to my sheet here, is I'm a private dick. <laughs> um, I believe that means I'm an investigator of That's mysteries right. and other, uh, say, uh, criminal and non-criminal endeavors. Uh, Nothing to see here. <laughs> Little rag <-taker. laughs> Yes, he's here. He's here. Yeah. Right. Right here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Fantastic. Rena, can you hear me? Can you? Yes. Uh, okay. <laughs> I'm here, everyone. It's true. He's here. It's All right, very good. So, so we have our investigators. They have arrived at the uh, the manse. They've gotten out of their vehicles or vehicle, depending upon if they were traveling together. And uh, we'll sort of toss this up to them. There is, at the front of the house, a big set of double doors. And in sort of wrapping around the side of this location, there's a big deck. And you can see the spindles on the wood here aged a bit. The paint is gone. And there's a cool and a little ominous wind that whips through the trees here. Blows your jacket a little bit back. And you know you're going to have to go inside that house. Clutch my card again. <laughs> I've already walked up to the door. There's got to be things in here I can sneak away before they notice. Well, it's it's said that uh, Old Man Dewart is very, very rich, or was. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's likely that many of the fixtures, many of his uh, odds and ends, there's probably a safe in a house like this. There's all sorts of things you could potentially walk away with. Uh, or you might be able to solve the lineage question. Uh, who cares about that? <laughs> oh, that's, that's reasonable. Reasonable. Okay, so how are you approaching the door? 
just walking up to it. Mm -hmm. I have no reason to expect anything's going to go horribly wrong. I see. Okay. The wood creaks under your feet, under the deck. Uh, you see that there's two large glass ovals on each one of these doors. They sort of create this design. And patterned into them, there are uh, etchings, markings, perhaps. Um, strange, almost like <clears throat> birds' feet have been stamped into them. It's a strange pattern. You've never seen it before. I peek through the window and see if there's anything moving around inside in case someone beat us to this. Okay, fair enough. You kind of cup your hands and look inside the window, stare back and forth. It's real dark in that foyer. And uh, uh, yeah, maybe there's a, an old banister you see. What are the, the, the sexy librarian and, and the private eye? What are, what are the two of you doing? Observing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll go around and kind of look through the windows to <laughs> see if I can uh, see anything else, like what's going on in there. Is, is there anyone already in there? Okay. What to are the, we getting ourselves into? To the left or the right of the main door? Left. Okay. So, this is our first chance of audience participation. Give me a room. Dining room. room. <laughs> yes. L living room. Okay. So, inside this, just the, the, just the slightest crack through this window. Mm -hmm. You see uh, some moldy old furniture, a bookshelf, and you see, uh, is that a shadow moving back there? Give me a spot hidden roll. Ooh, wow. 61 over 50. Yeah, it's, maybe it's a curtain. It's got to be an old curtain. I'm distracted by all the books. It's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a, that bookshelf there also is, it's behind, a, it's got glass cabinetry across it. Expensive books. Mm, indeed. Okay, very good. We have one room to the left. How are you getting in? Actually, give me a moment. Uh, tell me, Nate. Mm -hmm. I think what it's a detective corn muffin. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean to say. Corn mutton? Corn. Detective, Two T's. Detective corn mutton. <laughs> I'll correct that on my sheet. <laughs> well, how, how, are you, how are you approaching the house? No, I'm approaching straight up the stairs. Is there room? Uh, excuse me, you, you, you've hired by the family as well. Is there room on this big deck for me as well? Um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, There's plenty of room on this big deck. Uh, uh, I love a house with a big deck. <laughs> this is an, an impressive deck, but uh, you're, you're also uh, from the door, the door family. Uh, assume that we're all working here together to figure this out for them. Is that? Is that the case? I, I'm, 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 I'm Silas. I'm Silas. It's good to meet you. Mac. 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 Oh. And who's this sexy librarian over here? <laughs> Daphne. She Daphne. gives you the like, the like very soft lip handshake. Oh. Yeah, it's not uh, good. Are those real? <laughs> the, the glasses on the chain? Oh, that you have? Yeah. Those, those? <laughs> yeah, they're bifocals. So. Oh, oh I, bet, I, bet, I bet there's trouble when those come on, huh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, I'm yeah, uh, so it looks like we're all here. Um, let's just go and I'm going to try the door. Okay, it's locked. <laughs> it's locked. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> I can see why the family hired you. Is there glass on the door? There is. There's the, the, these large oval portions okay. of the door. So can I try to break the glass on the door? You certainly can. Excellent. I'm not going to make you roll for it. You, you're going to just put your fist through it? Yes. Okay. Yeah. You put your fist through glass. Oh, my goodness. i got to watch Shatter. over here for a second. Well, you do that. I can't be a... You reach person. in, mm -hmm. turn around, unlock the door. Creak. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. It's like, well, that solves that problem. Oh, I forgot. The family gave me a key. <laughs> uh, it looks like... Uh, Looks like you're set. Okay. We're good. Yeah. Nothing to see here. Literally, the window's broken. So inside is the foyer, where it's this sort of receiving area here to the left. You see that there's a, a living room. Thank you, Jackie. 
Sorry, say thank you. Molly. Molly, <gasps> Molly I apologize. Oh. It's okay, give, give Molly. <laughs> <laughs> give her a prize for the people she stayed. It was so worth my work to make that it mask was. of me. It was perfect. So the viewing audience uh, remotely here won't be able to see these wonderful masks until later. But uh, we have <laughs> that's, that's an expansion coming soon. To the, uh, the <laughs> okay, so to the right, someone give me a room. Music room. Ooh, a music room. That's fantastic. All sorts of trouble in a music room. Very good. All right. So to your right is a music room. To the left is the living room, Daphne, where you saw the bookcase. And yeah, I want a beeline for that. Okay. Bad okay. Boy. Check out them books. You beeline for it. Mm -hmm. um, under your feet, the wood floors of the living room tell of many years of use. You can hear each one sings its own cryptic hymn hymnal as you walk across them. You get to the case of books. Dust covers the glass. You can tell there are two tiny little knobs on it. That you'll have to somehow Just tweak them both. Right, correct. Right. Wrench them open. At the same time. Right. Oh, well, a one or a one or both at a time. It's up to you. Mm -hmm. Lots of knob tweaking today. Yeah. That's right. Um, no, I'll, I'll kind of try to pull them open and see if it's unlocked. Okay. Yeah, it's unlocked. Oh, you crack it open. So a flash appears in front of your face. A wondrous sight in front of you. And that is several first editions. Uh, in fact, a first edition of some of the work done here in Bedford. Mm -hmm. These are uh, priceless artifacts for the community, if nothing else. And then several leather-bound spines which don't seem to have any writing on them at all. And I imagine like the it pops open and Daphne's hair falls down and a slight breeze comes out of nowhere <laughs> and blows her hair. And then she kind of delicately runs her fingers along the unknown spines and maybe picks out one that looks particularly nice. and. <laughs> Where's that soft focus diffused spot coming from? <laughs> Backlit. It's, it's a function me. of the cabinet. Right. <laughs> Clearly. Mm -hmm. Function, absolutely function of the cabinet. Uh, okay, so detective, where, where are you headed? Oh, Daphne, it looks like you found some boring old books. Hey, Matt, you want to stick real close together and we can go uh, explore some of this, the rest of this house? It looks like it might be a little dangerous, so we should, we should probably you know, keep an eye on each other. Danger is my middle name. And just stalks off down the hallway. Oh, oh, wait for me, Mac Danger. I'm, I'm, I'm coming. <laughs> Mac, Mac Danger. <laughs> see that. Okay, so you uh, step into the music room. There is a enormous piano that sort of dominates the middle section, but there is an instrument along the side wall here. Heather, what kind of instrument is it? A xylophone. It's a xylophone. <laughs> okay. Classic. So there's a, a beautiful uh, xylophone. It looks like it's uh, imprinted with the a strange dragon shape that runs from the larger portion where the head is all the way down to some of the smaller portion of the xylophone with its tail. And you can tell that there are several different uh, musical notes that have been marked on each one of these pieces of the xylophone. And there are, of course, two hammers ready to play. Mac just looks down at the xylophone and shakes his head. Rich people. I've never seen a xylophone in a music room. Um, does it work? I don't know. Pick up the hammers. You want to give it a go? Heck yeah, I do. Pass him one, and I'm just going to start tapping everything. Well, I'll tap the other side then. Yeah. yeah it absolutely works. Uh, so I think what I'd like from the both of you is a power roll. Oh. Well, that's oh, that's, that's classic. <laughs> <with the xylophone. laughs> yeah. That's from your high school band. So I got a 51 under 65. Okay. Miranda's not going to let me cheat, so I got a... <laughs> what is it? A, a one zero and a zero. Yeah, it's a 10. That's a 10. Okay. Not okay. a 100. So that's two <laughs> successful power rolls. I'm going to say, uh, why don't you both roll a d6 for me? I don't like it when you say that. You're not supposed to like it. <laughs> Three until later. Five. All right, so uh, you can both spend that in your MP. Um, and as you continue to play the xylophone, you kind of get into a rhythm with one another. And there's a, a beautiful song that begins on the lower end. But as, as you both make your way up to the higher notes, 
it begins to, to crackle in your ears. And as this crackling continues, there's an energy that takes over the, the xylophone and a beautiful green swell of light spills out of it. And then something else arrives. What else arrives? A record contract. <laughs> Anyone? What else arrives? <laughs> no. This is going to be a I'm very short <laughs> We're not, we're not interested in, 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 in uh, starting the hard mode portion of the program. <laughs> not yet. A spectral orangutan. Oh, fantastic. Mm -hmm. Orangutans. <laughs> uh, as any uh, member of the Dwarf family would, would already know, uh, orangutans are part of their culture. Uh, so, up from the bottom of the xylophone, this green spectral orangutan lies, uh, pounding its chest and making all sorts of strange noise. Um, in the other room, Daphne, mm -hmm. you've caressed yourself two or three of these leather spines and mm -hmm. you've managed to ease one out of the bookshelf. You are, uh, you're staring at it now. It has a beautiful design. Uh, there's another oval on this one on the front face of it, and there appears to be a, a woman's portrait. And if you didn't know it any better, you would say it looked a lot like your grandmother. That's strange. I, I open, I mean, we're looking for the family lineage here. It could be in this book, so I open it up and kind of thumb through. I take out some gloves first, obviously, because I want to protect the pages. Right, clearly. And these are the sort of pages that you would want to protect, so you very carefully, as the xylophone music swells in the background, and you hear the strange... I don't strange know, a tiny hair. It's quite possible. Uh, you flip page, page, and page, and then suddenly you see lines drawn on these pages. People's names. Names of many of the families of, of Bedford, Massachusetts. It all seem to draw back to this DeWert family. And there, just on the fifth or sixth page, uh, you see your grandmother's name, and you see it's been etched out. <gasps> A shame. Indeed. But there seems to be some deeper truth in this book. You'd only have to probably read a few more pages to, to begin to understand what was going on. Oh, I mean, I'll keep going. Um, I don't know what the fuck they're doing, but <laughs> yeah. I'll keep to going. To be honest, neither do I. They're playing a xylophone. Can you guys quiet down in there, yeah. corn muffin? Do, 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 do. Uh, apparently danger we're blessing the rains down in Africa. Because danger we got man, danger man. Yeah, we're vibing. Yeah, we're see? Ed edit this, right? Mm -hmm. um, and go oh. on for 12 more minutes. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> so you continue to read the book, Daphne, and as you do, you uncover that at some point along the line, your grandmother was a part of the DeWitt family, perhaps. A, uh, a lover of the elder Dewart, uh, one not taken properly to a, you know, a, a wedding court and, and one simply kept in secret. Grandmother took many lovers. <laughs> I, I've heard that. <laughs> um, but as you continue to read, you begin to hear your grandmother's voice in your ear and she says, there can yet be vindication for our family, Daphne. There can yet be a cure. And that cure is finding what we what you truly deserve, which is the DeWert fortune, as you are the last, last member of the family. Mm -hmm. Whether you are legally claimed is not. She, you swell with pride knowing that um, you are more than simply a sexy librarian. Um, you are a DeWert. And funding for public libraries is horrible, so I do need that money. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. Uh, so. Back in the music room, a green spectral orangutan has arrived, <laughs> and I'd like both of our investigators in there to make me a sandy roll mm -hmm. before the keeper does. That's a 30, under 65. Oh, excellent. It's a 91. <laughs> uh, for the purposes of timing today, I'm going to say that seeing the spectral orangutan uh, is going to cost you 1d6 points of sandy on a failure, because that seems fun. And look at that, I've rolled a six. <gasps> That's fine. All right, so <laughs> if, well, maybe, fine. maybe. Uh, if you'd give me perhaps a, an intelligence roll for me to determine whether or not your brain can properly process what's going on or if you're going to shut that whole thing down. 
I'm, I'm doing math over here, Mike. Just one second. <laughs> Six. Carry the. Okay. Sorry. Um, Intelligence roll. Yes. It's my strong suit. Good. Is that an eight or five? <laughs> okay. Yeah. 68 under 80. Fuck. Right. So. <laughs> This, my, this character sheet has nothing over like 50 other than so, intelligence. <laughs> so traditionally, of course, uh, this is the role that you'd like to fail, uh, but you haven't. I have some fantastic dice here, and if anyone is interested, I'd like to have them come up here and roll his bow. Uh, if not, I'm happy to do it on my own. Yeah, come on, Sam. No, please. No, I love the music room. It's led to this Sandy. Bout. And so you are the person who should be rolling this, this bout, honestly. So uh, these dice uh, are just hilariously fun. After the show, if you want to come take a look, you can. No, nope, just right here. Crossing my fingers. Uh, so OSHA, the whole OSHA guidelines for you being on stage would be really difficult. Okay. So. Anxiety is one of our choices, <laughs> which I mean, That's doing a live show. I mean, right? Yeah. <laughs> it means it fits right here. Oh, this is fantastic! Thank you, Sam. Uh, so, uh, detective, you get oddly hungry. <laughs> oddly, uh, and you begin to get a fire within your stomach for really one thing, and that is the wood that this xylophone is made out of. It's really the only thing inside your body. That, it's the only thing that can quench the hunger that you have. And so it's not really the first or the second bar from the xylophone that you rip off, but when your teeth bite into the, the, the wood there, uh, after you break a couple of molars, you finally begin to come to a little bit. He's hungry for wood. <laughs> Thank you very much for that roll. <laughs> uh, so, Matt, I don't, Matt, is, this, 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 this gorilla doesn't do something to you? It doesn't do something to you? It's just a monkey. No, it's not. Help me with the, uh, give me, are you using that stick? <laughs> <laughs> I'm done with mine. Do you want it? Are you, are you? Uh, I'm, I'm good, yeah. thanks. I had, I had a nice, healthy American breakfast. Yeah, okay, I'm going to eat all this wood. And I can't stop myself. Uh, that's what I said last night. Uh, it just keeps <laughs> going. So you're going to continue eating wood for five rounds. <laughs> okay. I know it's real time. Uh, yeah. I'm also going to deal you a hit point worth of damage because you, you are going to shred the inside of your mouth. Mm -hmm. You're going to break a few teeth. And uh, likely the, your vocal cords are going to be a little messed up from all the, the, the scraps of wood that okay. you're, okay. you're swallowing. Okay. Uh, in the other room, though, uh, you hear this, Daphne. You hear someone eating uh, something. It's, very, it's a very unpleasant sound. Yeah. Uh, it's over and above, actually, the sound of the spectral orangutan that's running around here, yeah. um, which seems to come you know, rolling through the foyer and into the living room. <laughs> <laughs> and it looks at you. Mm -hmm. It's about three and a half feet tall. Okay. And uh, it rubs its armpits a little bit. Mm -hmm. It sort of smooths down its fur. You can see it. Oh, so moving its, oh, moving so its so spectral <laughs> green hair, and then it gives you a big toothy grin. Yeah. God. Oh no. Oh, no. <laughs> I don't smile back because I don't want it to feel like I'm an aggressor. Okay. But, and you would know that from all the books you've read, obviously. Mm -hmm. I'm going to have you make a sanity roll because okay. spectral green orangutans are not something you would normally see. Oh, they're not even in the library. I eat two over 70. Okay. We got one. Can we? Can we get the other? <laughs> no, nope. Just two points of sanity loss there. Uh, but it's not from the fear, actually. It's really from um, empowerment, and that is because the orangutan rolls over to you, and it reaches out its sort of curved hand mm -hmm. and asks you to take its hand. I do. I place my hand in its hand. So it's now following you around. Oh. It's, it's, so now I have a partner too. Yeah. <laughs> it's clear that the family didn't want you to be alone. No, and yes, this is my birthright. That it is. Yes, it's right for being maintained as your birthright. No, like their monkeys. names weren't in the book, right? No. no it's like no. monkeys in a barrel where you, you just put the hands down on the monkeys to pull out more monkeys. 
right. kind of like that. So there is a doorway that leads out of the living room, <laughs> Daphne. Yes. Uh, and you could venture into that room if you'd like, or you could go into the other room where it sounds like someone's uh, doing woodshop. No, I hate the sound of chewing in the theater. Or the theater. I work in a library. Uh, but also in the theater, I hate it when people chew loudly. So I want to get away from that noise. Makes sense. Totally makes sense to me. And I'll go through the other door. Okay, very good. Who would like to give me a room? Raise your hand. Yes, Sally. <laughs> a ballroom. Oh, a ballroom. Fantastic. This fancy house would have a ballroom, too. Uh, so, Daphne, you enter a ballroom. You can see that there are two exits, one on the far end, mm -hmm. and then one to your right. This ballroom is likely seen better days. Uh, there's no... There's really no rhyme or reason why the chairs have been seemingly nailed to the side of the wall in here. You're not sure why. <laughs> Uh, a bunch of the windows are cracked along the left-hand side of the room as you enter. And there are two beautiful, what look like, we'll just say Victorian-era chandeliers that hang in this place. And beyond everything else, which is covered in dust and cobwebs, those chandeliers are glistening brightly. Untouched by time. Uh, I mean, they're very high, I'm sure. It's true. The Spectre orangutan gangs on your arm a little bit. Oh, buddy! He wants yeah. to move. You know, but they're up there. You could go check them out. I give and, you a little and, voice and, they, and they do so. Yeah, you go, them up. go, go, buddy, go. Yeah. Uh, so they begin uh, swooping from chandelier to chandelier uh, in this strange and, and odd way. It almost seems like this is this is familiar to them. Oh yeah. I mean that makes sense. Mm -hmm. If it's the ghost that haunts the house. It disappears into the brass and into the chandelier itself, mm -hmm. floating off, not to be seen by human eyes. Oh, <laughs> now I'm sad. It's really the green glow that comes out of the chandelier afterwards that spooks you. Because now everything in this room is sort of bathed in this beautiful pale green light. And that's when you see, along the back end of this ballroom, silhouettes. One two, three. Maybe those are tablecloths. Maybe they're something you just didn't see until the green light of the chandelier came on. Mm -hmm. Can I interact with them at all? If I go over to the, like silhouettes of like people, right? It's seeming, it's a humanoid size. Humanoid, yeah, size. I, yeah, I'll see if I can interact with them. <laughs> okay, you go over. The closer and closer that you get to them, you realize the dimmer and the dimmer the chandelier lights get. Mm -hmm. Until you're right up against these spaces where these silhouettes hang. And you realize that you don't have any more backlighting. The room's gone dark. Mm -hmm. And you're alone. Oh no. I'll leave you there for a second. Okay. Uh, so, Detective, you stop eating wood, finally. And uh, you, you spit out a whole bunch of fragments and you realize you're bleeding from the mouth now. Uh, while this was going on, Mac, what were you up to? Oh, as soon as he started eating wood, I went <laughs> out of there. <laughs> okay, there is an exit on this side of the room here where the xylophone is, um, if you'd like to uh, go deeper into the house. I'll let you do that in private, buddy. <laughs> and I'm going out the door, see what else I could find. I'm going to say that there is a kitchen here. Well, not particularly hungry, but maybe they have silver silverware. Rich people, am I right? So there's a long room here that takes up the kitchen. It's, it's a professional kitchen, or at least would be of the time. Large preparation tables, sinks on one side, obviously cabinets to stick uh, goods in. There are also pots and pans, which are still out along the table. And then, yep. Down near the back there, you can see that there's a cabinet with little glass doors that's got a certain silvery quality to them. I am going to moonwalk my way over there because I am a smooth criminal. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to try and take that silverware. Fantastic. Do you have dancing? Mm. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's in the title. I don't need it. Make me a listen roll. Oh boy. Mm. 
Nope, that's a 36 over 25. Fantastic. Um, yeah, let me roll it. That's ominous. That's a d12, that's not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, you, uh, you get hit in the back. Right up on the right shoulder, you get hit by a, a pot, like a metal pot, and it clatters to the ground. Turn around and see who's throwing kitchen implements at me? It's just you in here, right? Okay, maybe there was a bit of an earthquake and I just didn't feel it because <laughs> I was moonwalking, you know, or I bumped into something and it knocked the pot off. Okay. I can appreciate your attempt at rationalization. <laughs> I think we all can. Mm -hmm. I'm very sane. Oh, very. <laughs> you do notice that the faucet is dripping. Every so once in a while you see a drip of water. You can hear it hit the bottom of the sink with a little tang. I'm going to go try and turn the faucet off because I really hate repetitive noises. Okay. You go to turn the faucet off and the handle comes completely off. There's now water gushing out of the sink. Okay, this wasn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> it's not my fault. I like the story. <laughs> and so I'm going to try and slip out of the kitchen, <laughs> grab some silverware on the way, because it's like, I'm not getting blamed for this. Okay. And so you go into the cabinet and grab a silver, we'll say teapot, mm -hmm. seems reasonable. And then you're going to head out one of three potential doors. Ooh. So should we roll randomly, or would someone else like to create a room in our fun little house? Yes, Molly? Billiard room? Oh, a billiard room. Fancy. I think that's a wonderful idea. Who doesn't like billiards? Hey, Mike, you notice that's also a ballroom? <laughs> <laughs> no, I hadn't. I uh, we'll just want to make sure on the map to be clear so we don't have the I am making a map which I'll be happy to give someone at the end of the session here, which would be fantastic. I want it. <laughs> I think we should roll for it. Uh, perhaps randomly. Perhaps it'll be a random thing. Okay, so let's stay on this for a second with me, Molly. What what kind of accessories would this build room was would this billiards room have? Oh, I think it has a full bar, a billiards table, obviously, um, a, a poker table, perhaps, even. Hmm. Okay, so, Matt, you see a room that you and several of your ne'er-do-well friends would really enjoy. It's where I liberate people from their money without them knowing. <laughs> That's right. So you uh, sashay into this room, uh, and I suppose then, maybe there's a... Maybe there's a lockbox that has money for the, the poker game in here. Maybe there's something decent behind that bar over there. Get some whiskey and some money at the same time. Sounds like a win-win to me. It certainly does. So I'm going behind the bar. You go behind the bar. Detective? Mac! Daph Daphne! Uh, uh, it hurts! Mac! Daph! <laughs> <laughs> I have one stick left, <laughs> clutching it, and I think I'm just going to randomly leave the music room. I'm not sure what direction. Okay. I'm a little bit messed up, so. Okay, so you uh, you random. We'll say that you leave back towards the foyer, looking for Daphne. Daphne, ah, is, hello. I think I need ah, help. You walk through the living room, and then find yourself in the ballroom. At the back of the ballroom, you see Daphne. And Daphne's dancing. There are these silhouettes that have joined her. Two or three of them. The end of the room is very, very dark, but you can make out her shape as the sexy librarian that she is. <laughs> she leaves quite, quite the shape to see. And it seems that she's leading these silhouettes throughout this wonderful dance. They look like Ghosts. Daphne! Daphne! So Daphne, mm -hmm. music came on at some point. A, a beautiful string quartet perked into your ears. And then suddenly you had several wonderful dancing partners. One after another in this dark space. 
the house is welcoming me. Oh. It, it does seem yeah. that way, yes. Does Detective Corn Muffin's um, Mutton? Two Muffin's, uh, <laughs> voice pierce through? It does. And in fact, it fractures the music that's present. And so. I also throw my stick at her to <laughs> break her out of this ghostly dance, because this is freaky. This, this, is, this isn't right. But yeah, you're completely, the, the, the dream world that you had, the wonderful, beautiful dance that you were having with, with all of these, you know, family members, friends, perhaps perhaps potential suitors, has been completely torn asunder by the detective whipping a wooden hammer at you. Yeah. What? Corn muffin, what did you do that? Muffin, toot, toot, I helped, uh, we got, are you okay? I helped you. Yes, I'm I, fine. I, you needed help and I, I gave it to you. No, the, what? <laughs> also, I'm missing teeth and I'm bleeding out my mouth. <laughs> I really, I need a drink and, are you, what were you doing, were those ghosts? Those look like ghosts. Yeah, the house is welcoming me back. Jesus Christ, we saw an orangutan. <laughs> no, I saw that too. <laughs> what do you mean you saw him too, you saw the orangutan? He's back in the house. How are you so calm about this? This thing was like a ghostly This is freak. my birthright. I found a book. Wait, did you do the lineage job? Did you? So, I swap, mm -hmm. 23 and me. <laughs> it's modern day, so. Oh, okay. Let me, let me log in. No. Okay, no, so but I did find is, a book. Well, I, that's okay. Can you I? You should see try the them sometimes. No, I don't. I don't really like them, but if it helps me do that, are you? The, the family didn't hire you, right? They just hired me. So I well, can I share. Well, I need to be hired because it's mine. Okay, so it's your family. Anyway, so then I'm going to present you my bill for services. Sure. Because the family <laughs> hired me to figure out the lineage. We're all here together. Mm -hmm. And so you're welcome, Daphne. <laughs> Thank you. All right, excellent. <laughs> let me write. God, my tooth. This doesn't bother you at all? Because I think there's some No, it looks horrendous. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, not on the floor. Oh, it's your floor. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did a detective, something touches your shoulder while you're talking to Daphne. And I flail wildly in that direction. <laughs> you get you get wrapped up a little bit in what looks like a tablecloth. What a table is wrong cloth. with you? What is wrong with your house? What Where does the tablecloth come? There's not... What's it look like, Mike? Well, that's a great question. It's good that you would ask it now after getting wrapped up in it. Um, it's a beautiful, thick tablecloth, and there seems to be no end of the fabric that's here. You continue to spin and, and sort of jerk back and forth wildly, leaving mm -hmm. a trail of pirouetting blood from your mouth all over this beautiful fabric. Um, and definitely, you see this, and it feels it feels right. It feels okay. It's beautiful in its simplicity. It is. It is. The house is coming to protect you mm -hmm. uh, from everything inside of it. Yeah. So the most obvious move for Silas is to keep wrapping. Oh, okay. Around and around. That sounds like a fantastic idea. Let me roll some dice here. Lean in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so you're going to get an option. Mm -hmm. I think that you're going to get an option really to dodge or fight back. I think that fight back is likely what you're going to do. I really want to fight back against a tablecloth. <laughs> that, that's always been a call. I mean, we were not, clearly, fight his way out of when, the table when we started this, we didn't think that you were going to be eating wood, but we're here now. So, like, it's just, you know, yeah. we'll see it to its end point. Silas Corn Mutton the second was felled by a table, and I it just feels third. like the third me would, would, would be able to. So yeah, my options are dodge or fight back. That's correct, because you're, you're entering the Am I armed with anything? Other than, well, I threw my xylophone stick. You time. did. Are you armed with anything? Uh, so does this detective have anything as far as equipment he could use to fight back against the table? He doesn't have the stick? I threw he it at it. Oh, Daphne. Oh, it was a good use of it, though. I don't think he has a pocket. That's reasonable. Mm -hmm. I agree with the audience. You have a pocket knife. All right. And so I pull it off the clip on my pocket, very, very dead like, and flip it open and just start <laughs> slicing out a, uh, an exit of this. It, it so. seems like a fight back maneuver to me. What did I get? Not a two. <laughs> okay. Did so I impale my tablecloth? <laughs> <laughs> Reservations. Yeah. Um, yeah. You you impale the tablecloth into the wall. Okay. What what's my pocket knife damage? Oh, <laughs> probably D three. D twelve. Oh, D. 
No. <laughs> Alright, I got a three, so... Okay. Do so you have any strength bonus? You know, we made these characters at that sheet at that table and... It's okay. What's my strength? 55? No. No, there's no, size, size, there's no size bonus you damage yeah. at that point. 55, 55. Yeah, no. so you, you mm. nail it to the wall. Alright. That, that's Damn, one. I'm gonna fuck up this tablecloth like <laughs> Take that you stupid piece of fabric and dump yeah. that from the bill. And uh, <laughs> gouging into the wall of the tablecloth. I make note of that. So, Daphne, I have an important question for you. Yeah. Uh, would you like to make a power roll? I would love to. I'd love nothing more. Uh, that is an 80. Yes. Okay. Over 70. 80 over 70. So, you feel the house calling to you. Like it's concerned about what's going on, I that do. perhaps the detective is taking things a little too far. Uh -huh. My question to you is, would you like to push that one? Oh, yeah. <gasps> push the power. Push and then the if you're going to push it, how would you push it? Push the Um. So the house is telling me that he's taking it too far. What am I pushing, I guess? <clears throat> so I'll give you a little bit, a little bit more. Uh, information here. You can feel the threads of these tablecloths almost as if they're uh, attached to your fingertips, as if perhaps if you just moved your fingers in the right motion back and forth, you might be able to command them to, to, to move the house against the detective. Oh, it's against him. Oh, certain. Oh, then yeah. No, I mean... <laughs> yes. I'm fighting for my life. Yeah, well, it's about to get real tight in there because that's what I send. That's how I want. I want to to connect my spirit with the house and and draw it in a way that it will wrap tighter around Detective Corn Muffin um, in maybe the the throat area. <laughs> the throat area. Okay, fair enough. I like that as a push, and I would just, as your keeper, uh, remind you that push rolls are bad. Oh, I'm Failed push rolls are bad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm fully, I'm fully confident. I have a 70 in cow, so what's the chance yeah, of me rolling over? What's going to go wrong? What could you possibly go wrong? I rolled 12. Oh, sorry, 19. 91? <laughs> no, <Nope. laughs> this is what it was. I can't read that from here. It could be a 91. It's a 19. Uh, so you dig deep mm -hmm. and you make these strange motions with your fingers. You feel maybe a few knuckles crack as your your fingers move into a more mangled position and the house acquiesces to your request uh, and it begins to cover the detective in more tablecloths. <laughs> ah, ah, I'm getting jumped out in the ballroom! <laughs> so I'm going to make a couple of rolls. Uh, detective, you're welcome to fight back. I this is considered a new round. Every so time. It, we'll of course be penalties uh, with a all the fight back and maybe do. Oh, it's not going in any combat. <laughs> no, we remember that? Yeah, I do remember that's that. Table. That's tablecloth impales. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to get impaled by a tablecloth. Just accept your death. That's not an impale weapon. I remember from you. It is yeah. now. I got a 54 to 27. Okay, so you get hit by the first one, but do not get hit by the second. Okay. That is ideally very likely for you. Uh, likely very ideal for you. I'm going to deal you simply one point of damage, but, but, you are being smothered by a tablecloth, as uh, any potentially true detective might be. Uh, you are gasping for air, mm -hmm. and so it has pulled this maneuver off to where it is now suffocating you and wrapping around your neck. And is that cackling from Daphne you hear in the background? What the hell is going on in this house? <laughs> my blouse is falling open. My wind is blowing in my hair. I'm cackling as I'm choking out Detective Cornmuffin. I start calling out for Matt's help. Okay. As loud as my choking detective can can do so. So I imagine Max has been like this whole time, like the, the guy in a fight in a bar who's just going around taking sips of people's drinks <laughs> and like that kind of vibe while they're just fighting in another room. Yeah, I can see that. Absolutely. Okay, uh, you hear a, a strange voice call your name? Oh God, not again. Just, if there's whiskey, mm -hmm. I'm going to take the whole bottle and try and find the room where the shouting is coming from. 
Yeah, you find it. You have to go back into the kitchen and then go right a little bit, and then you, just for your information, as you pass through a, a sort of a back hallway area, you see that there are stairs that lead up and stairs that lead down, and then you enter the back end of this ballroom and you see uh, sort of a, well, a farce of laundry, perhaps. There's a bunch of tablecloths winding around the detective, and it looks like he's playing a game. What who does not look like they're playing a game is Daphne who has sort of changed visually a little bit. Like her, her skin is a little redder. Her fingers are in a very strange position. Um, and she seems to be sort of ebbing and flowing with enjoyment watching the detective writhe in, in pain. So I walked in on someone's OnlyFans filming. Right. The line between pleasure and pain is sometimes very thin. They have such sights to show me. I'm just like, okay, what the fuck, guys? Matt, help! She's killing me with this laundry! He got wrapped up in the sandwich. No! Box. She's killing me! Matt, help! I have no issues with autoerotic strangulation. I don't but... concern! <laughs> <laughs> Fine, okay. I'm just gonna go up and. Is that a pocket knife? He does appeal like there's a pocket knife. Do you want me to? Okay, I'm just gonna take take the knife and just like start cutting at the at the sheets and just like giving Daphne very odd but also very aroused looks because her blouse is falling open. <laughs> uh, detective, make me a con roll. See if you can stay awake. <laughs> I have another blouse under my blouse. <laughs> Big great double blouse. I'm layered. Started. Layered. That's a problem. Listen, it's Massachusetts. The the weather changes uh, at a moment's notice. Exactly. Um, 60 over 45. Oh, that's not good for you. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you so, want me to push it. Uh, I mean, I would offer you the ability to push it. Yes, absolutely. Push I'm it. I'm trying to not fall unconscious. I'm going to fall. Um, yeah, I'm going to draw upon my private dick in instruction and training as a young apprentice dick, where <laughs> yes. we were trained to escape strangulation uh, such as this through acrobatic means. So I'm going to try and do a backflip out of this. <laughs> this, uh, this I think that's a fantastic idea. I think we need a demo right, right here. Do you hear what that looks like? Uh, no. <laughs> no. I don't, I, I don't think the show would consent to that. <laughs> Twelve. <laughs> right. Well, I guess now that you've succeeded on the roll, you have to show us what it looks like. <laughs> um, I'll choke you while you do it. <laughs> you are choking me. Anyone got so a tablecloth? Like. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> right? And you've got the, your yarn, which would be perfect. But so I've got the uh, the, the thing, and it's so wrapped around. Can I just preface by saying, for those of you at our home audience who are really watching this in the future, this is a puppet. Uh, puppet Nate specifically. <laughs> he's, he's That's obvious, Michael. <laughs> you know what? He's not wearing any glasses. He can't see without his glasses. He can't see without his glasses! <laughs> sorry, so, I'm sorry. I probably a 90s kid. Come on. Come on. <laughs> okay, so go ahead and we'll go ahead and walk us through this portion uh, of it and then uh, just, just so that way we understand what's going on. Hey. No, I know. <laughs> Where are you going? Uh, here I am, wrapped up, wrapped up, almost in love, Miss. And and, and uh, Matt comes up and, and grabs the uh, knife, of course. And so I'm still wrapped up, and I, I struggle, and I strain, and I'm, I'm losing consciousness. But I remember my dick training, and I slowly recover. I will not be bested by a librarian! <laughs> and I flip out and over and the noose comes out and I lose my glasses, but then I come around. I will not be beaten! <laughs> but then I, my mouth is completely bleeding and bloody. I've, I've strained every muscle. Oh, yeah. uh, Silas is, a, is approximately 45, so this move will have lasting ramifications Certainly. for the next six to nine months. That's, that's eight, 800 to 1,200 right throw. <laughs> <laughs> Help me. <laughs> I'm just going to 
amble over and pull him up by the hair slightly and pour some whiskey into him as if that would solve all his problems. So, uh, I, I'm going to give you an additional hit point worth of damage from the whiskey to the open wounds in your mouth. That, that will not do well at all. That will not go well, well for you at all. Uh, so, I got to ask, Daphne, it seems anyway like the detective somehow has made it out of the, the trap that was uh, sprung. And I'm impressed. <laughs> um, and also innocent, or at least I will feign to be. So go ahead. Oh my god, what happened? Uh, are you okay, okay Daphne? Oh. Yes. You have amnesia or something? You were doing the thing with the hands and laughing. And no. It was kind of creepy. Oh, I just, I don't know. I just said, uh, if something came over me, I take off my blouse and there's another blouse underneath. I'm like a Russian <laughs> nesting doll of blouses. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Time here. Mac, Mac is half drunk and very distracted right now. Thanks, I don't even know. Are you okay? Don't. Are you, you, are you okay, Corn Muffin? About this. You know what you did. And I am Silas Corn Mutton the Third. <laughs> And of strong stock, I can tell. I'm trying to get up off the floor. Don't believe her, Mac. She did this on purpose. Can I roll uh, psychology what? to see if she's lying? Oh, absolutely. Uh, so this, of course, is opposed by uh, a social skill on your part, if you'd like, uh, Daphne. Oh, well, um, the social skills that we gave me are is intimidate. <laughs> <laughs> he does that. I'll, I'll, I'll allow it if you can make it fit. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. Yeah, you could get uh, you could get a little uppity if you'd like. And, yeah. And, no, and, that's I, I, yeah. Yeah. I take off my neck blouse, and this one's up to my neck now because it's oh. very stuffy, and the, I put the hair back up, and the glasses go back on. Oh. <laughs> very intimidating. Oh, I'm sorry. Intimidating. Yes. No, I'm Eek. I'm scary mean librarian now. Mm. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I'm okay. just, as you're sussing it out, you know I, that's what? what I do. Let's let the dice decide how okay. scary and mean you are. <clears throat> Fuck. <laughs> um, what'd you get? 48 over 40. Yeah, I got a 63 over, it doesn't matter, it's 45, yeah. <laughs> God, you are scary. Yeah, it's, it's strange, this new blouse that she's wearing has a very high collar. And it's sort of open, and you can tell that now she's, you can see that there's a brooch underneath this last blouse that she's taken off. It, it's oval. It matches very much the symbol on the front door. It was my grandmother's. It was. <laughs> so I'm sliding towards the wall, put my back against the wall safely, and I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I just, it, that was a lot, and I just, I thought, I thought you were lying for some weird reason, and just, I just need a moment. We can't spend all of our time in these ballrooms. Certainly not. We can't? No. Oh. I'm starting to think the house is pleated with how much ballroom there is. <laughs> hmm. Okay, so where are the three of you going? Is there another door? There is. Okay. So there's the door that, that uh, Matt came in, and that leads back, you would know, towards the kitchen. But you also know there's that small hallway in between, that there perhaps was some stairs up and stairs down. I'm going upstairs. All right. Which rarely happens. <laughs> <laughs> But it does happen. Excuse me? <laughs> oh, you're living in a ranch. I got it. Yeah, yeah. that's makes sense. Yeah. I'd like to go down. Then I will go wherever Daphne is not. Okay, so again, the, the, the duo of Mac and... Mac, wait up. I'm going with you. Yay. <laughs> mm -mm -mm -mm. Fantastic. All right, so we'll go upstairs first. So upstairs, the home is, obviously the, the ground floor is much grander than the, the, the second floor, but there is a little landing here up the second floor, and you see that there's a chair and a vase. From the audience, what's in that vase? Perennials. <laughs> non, non specific. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, perennials. <laughs> Pick them up in your local true value. Is it a vase or is it a vase? 
It's a vase. Okay, so it's not expensive. No. Well, you don't really know, actually. Mm. You're not really sure. You could appraise it. Appraise it. <laughs> We're you could. You absolutely could appraise it. <laughs> okay. Perhaps it is a vase. Hey, I got a lot of money for the last vase I stole. Balls. I mean, liberated. Right. Thirty-five or fifteen? Nope. It absolutely is. That is a priceless artifact. Well, that's coming with me. I'm just gonna take the perennials out, and drop them on the floor. Okay. They're not worth anything. No. But that that well vase. vase. Uh, so you've got the silver teapot and you've got the vase now. Mm -hmm. You're gonna need like a take-home sack or something. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. I'm sure they've got luggage or something around here. There's Sorry. a tablecloth downstairs. <laughs> 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 okay, so detective, uh, while Max sort of works over the vase. I'm picking up a flower and sort of toying with it, my hands idly. Max, she was lying. You, you know she was lying, right? Yep. So... But she's hot. <laughs> you can't get away with things like that just because you're... <sighs> yeah, you can. Yeah, you can. I mean, he just sort of gestures to himself. Mm, okay. Well, I mean, I got an appearance of 35, so I don't even know what that is like. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Not at all. What else is looking around in this room? So the landing area here seems to have a couple of doors, one on your immediate left and then one further down the hall. There are a series of portraits in this room, and oddly they seem to go in a generational step. The last portrait here is from probably the, the early 90s. It's of a, a man in a business suit. You can see there's a little placard mm -hmm. at the bottom. It says Brian DeWert. And then a couple feet down, there's another portrait and another one. Some of men, some of women. Some you're not so sure because you can't really see that in depth. But there's definitely a series of family portraits here. And these are immense. Uh, as far as portrait goes, oh yeah, yeah, they're three and a half feet wide, five feet tall. They're, they probably weigh three hundred pounds as they sit against the wall on the the thick frames. So I'm looking for a family resemblance from these portraits and Mean Daphne. Mm. Okay. Well, as a private in, uh, investigator, you definitely are used to looking at mug shots. So basically, you're looking to pick out. You know, is, you know are there any common? Common threads between them. So mm -hmm. you can give me a spot hidden roll and see if maybe you can pick your way through. 40. 40, is it? Yeah, 42 to 65. Okay. So about the third one down, this is likely mid 60s, this was done. There is a woman uh, in this portrait and she has uh, maybe not a 60s haircut. This is much more of a 50s haircut. Very high. Uh, she wears a very high uh, collared shirt or blouse. She's very attractive. She's also uh, very clean cut. She has a sharp pointed nose, which reminds you a lot of Daphne. And her eyes are staring at you as you approach. Yeah, as murderous intent. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh. Without question. Mac, Mac. M Mac, is, Mac is half drunk and does not like pictures that seem to stare at you and he's still got the pocket knife so he's going around cutting the eyes out of the pictures <laughs> just like slashing through the eyes of the pictures as he's going down the hallway yeah that's very wait Matt I need my knife for a second wait slice 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 I don't care about the picture but I mean look at this one this does this look look I can't take it it's the, the frame's too come, come come cut this out Cut the eyes. No, no, no! Come cut the picture out. <laughs> you, you reach in and you go, you go to cut the eyes, and the eyes stare at you. They readjust. Nope. Make a sound. <laughs> I was gonna say that's a hard no, but that's a big nope. I think you coming in and destroying all this that's, stuff in my house means I can kill you. <laughs> that's an 82 over no 65. So yeah, that's a bail. that ain't right. No, nope. that ain't right at all. Ooh. Yeah, so uh, in our live shows, we're just going to upgrade all our sanity losses. So that's six. Nice. Uh, and make me an intelligence roll if you would. I'm very smart. I swear if you eat this, I'm, I'm a smart boy. I really want you to be a smart boy today. <laughs> that's, all of our, that's our evidence. Uh, nope, actually. Um, you rolled the wrong one. Not that's a 56 own. over 35. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you failed. So you, you keep it together. Uh, 
I stab the eyes again. You go to stab the eyes again, and you're going to get resistance from the portrait. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd like you to actually make a fighting brawl. Oh God. And I'm going to fight back. I don't I'd like to assist the painting, because I, I, <laughs> I, I, I wanted, I didn't want this to happen. And I'm right there too. I think that's fair. Uh, so I'll just ask if, mm -hmm. if you would give me, Matt, you're, you've already dropped an action, so it's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I think it's reasonable that you could try to assist the painting. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In what way would you I'm do I'm just that? trying to move. I gave you some of the away. fancy whiskey earlier. Why are you helping the painting? I no, this is evidence. But whiskey. I oh, shared my whiskey with you. Okay. Can you have two things at once? Whiskey and evidence. <laughs> Week three. Right. Uh, Apprentice Dick training school. We learned about evidence and we also learned about alcohol use. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so why don't you give me a fighting brawl and see if you can incur... Uh, 84. Over... I'm pretty sure I'm at 25. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, gave, we gave no cup. That's good. All right, fantastic. Uh, so you roll... Such is the uh, I, I know. <laughs> 48 over 25. Okay, awesome. So my fight back roll works. Uh, so the, the lady steps out of the portrait. She puts a oh, hand... Oh, no. Nope. Puts a hand <laughs> on your wrist, Mac, and says... It's time to be a good boy. Don't threaten me with a good time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so a wo the woman steps out of the painting, detective. Oh and shit, kill it, kill it, kill it! <laughs> <laughs> Before that happens, make me a sanity roll, because that ain't right. Uh, 52, oh no, yeah, 52, I got 39 right Oh, now. fantastic. No, that's only two. Six, seven, eight, that's still one away. Yeah, you're, um, how, how close are you to indefinite? One away from indefinite. Fantastic. That's what we'd like to see. Uh, so, while that's going on upstairs, Daphne, you've gone down stairs. Oh, um, yeah. And you begin, once you get to the floor here, you see that there are a series of old lights that have been set up along a, a simple electrical wire. And they run to a simple light switch at the bottom of the stairs. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the downstairs is dark. Oh, I'll, I'll flick, flick, flick it a little bit. <laughs> Tap it just a little bit on the bottom, and eventually it, it goes all the way up. Mm -hmm. And then the <laughs> lights come on in this lower section here, and you see wine cask after wine cask after wine cask. Oh, yes. And at the end of this row of amazingly old wine casks, you see that there is a vault or some sort of safe at the back. Oh, I'm going and there. Okay. You walk forward, you can feel the house sort of urging you on, urging you internally to, to get into the safe. And beside the safe, there's a portrait of a man who likely in his age was blonde, but has now gone gray. Mm -hmm. And you see the, the brass tag at the bottom that says Jeremy DeWert. And he's in a blue suit, very business, very banker-esque. Uh, and he seems to be beaming with pride. Oh, me too. Yeah. No, this is my place. I want to see if I can crack open this wall. Or maybe it's already cracked, but probably not. Okay. How would you like to uh, to do that? I would like to uh, do build, I would use my listen skill to okay. <laughs> put my ear to it so and see if go, I can... We're going to go deep in the can, bank of movie tricks. Yes. And, the, and see if I can... Um, okay. I, I'm very astute hearing as a librarian. Yes, um, and so if I can hear the pins. Okay, so you're going to move the knob back and forth and see if you can hear mm -hmm. what happens? Yep. Okay. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. Fantastic. It's a, what, six? a 62 under 70. Ooh. Interesting. So you, you feel the knob back and forth a little bit. You can, you can also feel the, the difficulty that this safe the resistance the safe is giving. Mm -hmm. But you hear it click. You're not sure if it's a single combination or if it's multiples, but you think you have one of them. Mm -hmm. You have one of the numbers. It's 22. Mm. Perhaps I need to look around the house for more numbers. Mm. Interesting. So back upstairs, reporter lady has arrived for her prime time uh, part of the episode. Uh, detective, a woman has stepped out of the portrait 
and she's holding Mac's arm, and she turns her gaze to you and says, this is all your fault. <laughs> that's very unfair. I think that's jumping to a conclusion that isn't actually a result of the actions that we've taken. I think to myself. <laughs> okay. She walked out, but is there still a, is now there like an empty painting? There is. So there's, there's still yeah, a, there's an empty scene. Mm -hmm. okay. Mac, Mac, maybe I'm going to try and pull the painting off the wall and put her back in it. Oh, I think it's a fantastic idea. So why don't you go ahead and make me a strength roll and attempt to dislodge the massive frame off mm -hmm. and pull it down so over her. Mac went to Catholic school. So when an imperious woman tells him to do something, he just kind of immediately goes into, yes, ma'am. So he's going to try and stop him. Hmm, interesting. <laughs> I, think, I think that's an interesting kind of cross combat that's going on. I'm happy for you to, to attempt to, to stop him. Fighting for all, I guess? Um, yeah, I, I suppose. In what way are you attempting to... I'm just going to try and... was actually just going to try and step in front of him and stop him like from taking the picture down. Yeah, try to claim the space. I think that's that's more of a brawl role than it okay. is anything else. And I have no fighting skills. Thank you, Miranda. Uh, Me did it too. Uh, Sixty-three. Just, okay. So, so no. Matthew, you try to step in front, and how's your strength roll? Very good. It is a at least a hard success. Okay, hard success. Very good. Uh, so you leap up and you grab onto the top of this portrait, and you even manage at a hard success to dig your foot into the wall and pull the frame off. Watch out, Mac! Uh, and as you do, uh, it's funny you mention that. As you do, the frame comes off the wall. It swallows the woman whole. And your companion, Mac, as they're both catapulted inside this frame, which slams with a heavy thud onto the floor. So I say, yes! Oh! <laughs> uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Sort of peek. I don't want this hand to come out, and I've seen all the people. Just gonna you're, gonna, you're gonna peek. Under yeah, her. just take a peek under the, the painting. Yeah. Are you sure about that? <laughs> well, now it's cowardly if I don't. <laughs> Are you really sure? I'm sure that I'm going to do this, and I'm gonna get my face really close to the edge of that frame. Gonna see it. I'm gonna be on my hands and knees, and I'm going to slowly raise it. It's not the first hand, or even the second one. It's the series of hands that appear from underneath. <laughs> you attempt to push it back down, but that's not before they're going to try to throttle you. I had this. You hear from the inside of the portrait, we hunger. <laughs> well, that's, a, that's an eight. That's fantastic. So, uh, fight back or dodge well, I want your to choice. Run. I want to get away from this. This is not a fight, so I'm going to dodge. You're going to dodge. Hey, what's the uh, 45, so this doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. Okay, uh, you get, well, you get yanked into an uncomfortable place. <laughs> Just put it that way. Is it the back My lips? It is, in fact, not the back of the lips. your lip. Uh, <laughs> yeah, your head hits the, hits the ground, hits, hits that wood floor, mm. and you feel uh, your, your head goes sideways as three or four hands grab one in the back of your head, your ears, your nose, uh, one of the hands forces its way into your mouth mm. and sort of uses it as oh, a, a cup to, to pull its mm. its quarry into the frame. So for you, Mac, mm -hmm. things are a little different. <laughs> yeah. Now you're standing in a music room next to a, the woman who came out of the portrait, who's sitting in a chair. There is an artist just beyond her who is painting. And for the moment, you are in the music room. And there's some odd music playing. Goddamn xylophone. It's actually not. You hear a radio playing a song. It, is it a Beach Boys song? <laughs> oh god, no. Not Kokomo. <laughs> uh, the woman in the chair looks over at you and says, I'll be with you in just a moment. I'm just going to go wait over here, and I'm going to try and slip out the door. <laughs> okay. So the door from the music room leads, are you going back to the kitchen, which you know, you know the house you're in. Mm -hmm. Are you going to the kitchen or are you going to the foyer? I'm going back to where the booze was, because <laughs> I am not drunk enough for this. 
Okay, you walk back in through the kitchen and you begin to see the house in its current state alive as people are cooking and cleaning and, and people are preparing meals. And with each step you move closer and closer to the billiards room, um, you realize without question you are not where when you are supposed to be because that kind of uniform went out of style with Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> Okay, but that is Samuel. Yes, of course it is. Of course. That is a 58. Hmm. And my sand is 59. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, I, that's, a, that's a succeed, but on such a, a terrifying uh, understanding that you've gone through a, a, a time travel event, most likely. Um, I'm going to upgrade the sanity die from where it's at to where it needs to be, I think given the fact that of the traumatic event you're going through. And I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna roll a D12. Yeah. I think that's reasonable. Is anyone that else? That sounds right, yeah. Was it D20 that yeah. failed? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I, think, I think D20 for a time travel at Sam Moss is probably pretty reasonable. Yeah. D12 if you succeeded. That's a three. Look how well you've done. I'm so, I'm so glad. How close are you to indefinite in Sam? Uh, I've got a while to go. Oh, good. <laughs> So, Daphne, yep. you continue to move the, the knob back and forth, mm -hmm. carefully moving it to pick up left and right where the clicks are. And you get through about four of them before you, you lose the, the sound. You figure that there's got to be something in this house that can give you a clue as to where the other numbers are or what they are. Yeah. Well, it's modern day, right? It is. So I would just probably look for an office, see if there's like a sticky note under a keyboard. Um, I think that's a fantastic idea. Yeah, uh, so I need to look for an office though. Okay. So you're going to look down here for an office? No, I'll look upstairs, but I will ask um, A, the painting, <laughs> and B, the house in general for its guidance. It is uh, guiding you. It wants, it wants me to find what it wants me to find. It does, it, you're, without question. Yeah. It, you lead it, uh, it leads you upstairs, and as it leads you upstairs, you come to find that there's an enormous painting on the floor here as you get to the second floor. And there's also blood on the floor? What the fuck did they do to my house? <laughs> have no idea. But the bill that the detective is going to get is going to yeah. be quite costly. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. So you sort of move through the second floor and you move into one of these bedrooms. And you see that this must be Jeremy's bedroom. Everything here is sort of set up for a, 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 a patriarch, right? There's you know, specific types of closets, suits uh, are laid out in preparation. There's a beautiful uh, king-size bed. There are uh, windows which could be open to look down onto the yard and onto the estate grounds. He had to have done most of his work in here. Because oh. you haven't seen an office. Yeah, I'll start. I'll start rummaging. Okay. Okay. So you rummage through the office for a while. Anywhere in particular in this space? There's a desk. There's mm -hmm. a bed. There's a closet you could look into. Oh, um, probably the desk. If I'm looking for numbers of significance, I will look around the desk first. In particular. Okay. You you open up the desk and you find a a ledger. And it's got a series of accounting statements in it. It looks like the DeWork family is likely worth, if numbers are to be believed here, somewhere in the 10 to $15 million range. Okay. Still holding on to some of that money uh, that they had from, from years gone by. Yeah. That the state is eagerly interested in claiming. Mm -hmm. Plus, they have very expensive books. Absolutely. So there's that as Absolutely. well. Absolutely. Yeah. There are a series of numbers here. Three of them align with the ones that you've tried. Okay. So there is a 22, mm -hmm. right? There is a 7, mm -hmm. and there is a 2 and a 7. Okay. And you sort of continue to look. It looks like there are scratch marks on this piece of paper. And there's a little note circled at the bottom that says, check shelf. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Is there a shelf around? <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, there are, there are several shelves here. Uh, 
very different uh, knickknacks and whatnot. There are a couple of small pieces, um, art pieces that you see. Mm -hmm. You don't see anything else that looks like a scrap of paper with maybe some numbers on it. Something like that. You'd have to inspect uh, them a little closer. No, that's, that's what I, I wanted to Oh, do. okay. Yeah, no. Okay. Uh, so, two of the things on the shelf pique your interest are vehicles. They're model cars. Mm -hmm. One, as is shown, is a, an Etzel. And it looks like it's from the 50s, 55 to be specific. What? A what? An Etzel. Okay. You know that if you're a librarian. Right. <laughs> uh, and the other one is a Corvette. And it's an 81 Corvette. Okay. Those are the really only the, the only thing that's numbered here on the shelf at all. Oh, there's numbers. <laughs> <laughs> I realized I was not putting something together. That's okay. It's like fantastic. Well, all right, it happened. <laughs> we were all waiting. <laughs> if it's not set up like the Dewey Decimal System, she doesn't. She right. Doesn't get it. Right. Yeah. I saw these and I was like, fuck, this is a puzzle with numbers and I don't know what's going to I don't, there's the that, solution. The bucket of panic hits know. the player. Oh, God, what did I got myself into? Yeah. Okay. No, I'll make note of those numbers mm -hmm. so that I can go back down and try them too. Okay. You head back downstairs. Mm -hmm. uh, so in uh, the world of, uh, you know, 1965, uh, Detective, you arrive in a very, very terrible way to a room which you don't want anything to be a part of. I got sucked into. You oh, got yeah. pulled in by hands. Oh, I thought I was still fighting. Them. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, you're in what looks like a closet. It's 1965. Uh, you can <laughs> tell that. <laughs> I might have to stay there. <laughs> hey, we don't put people in closets on this show. Nope. Not a one. <laughs> uh, you're in a closet, and around you are a series of hands. <laughs> They're holding on to you. So that doesn't happen? <laughs> this sounds like a fun closet to me. Is it violent holding on? Um, well, I mean, I, you haven't tried to resist just yet since, since coming, since appearing in this closet. They're just coming out of the wood? Yeah, that's the, that's the tough thing, right? So they, they meld out of the wood and out of the plaster walls here. And uh, each one has a very particular portion of your frame that they're holding on to. Wrists, elbows, shoulders, knees, feet. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm getting handsy with private dick over here. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. We, this can be fine. We can, this can be nice. We don't have to, here, I'm just going to, and then, gently move one of my arms and just see what happens if I try to get out of breath. Okay, you gently move one of your arms and you feel the fingers on this, this hand on your right wrist here, they, they try to, they try to pull back, pull you back, but it's not, it's not a hard pull, it's a very uh, careful one. That's cool, that's cool. I, I, I just need this, I just need this. I just, can I have it? I just need it. Pull your arm away. I'll give it a little pat. It's okay. I'll be back. He tries to interlace <laughs> his fingers with yours. Like this thing? Oh, yeah. Well, oh, that's way too... It's moving too fast for me. <laughs> I'll do it. Okay. In very gentle. Just, I just need this one, too. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Just sort of try to gently get all these hands off of me. You do so. You need to go looking for the Goblin King who stole your little brother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, put my hand up for a high five. <laughs> Did that happen? Yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I couldn't leave you hanging. I appreciate <laughs> but I couldn't it. Do it. Um, I'll be back. I'll be back. This is actually sort of cool. I like this. And open the closet. You open the door. As soon as you open the door to the closet, you're standing in the billiards room. Mac enters from the far side. And it seems like they're very interested in getting to the whiskey cabinet that you're standing next to. Okay. Oh, you. You see him walk out of a closet that's filled with hands. Do I want to know? Hey, it's fine. They're they're all they're very they're very cool. You don't have to worry about them. Um, 
Yeah, don't don't even look at it. It's fine. I'll close the door. Shh. Close the door. Um, hey, I'm glad to see you because I was worried that you were in paint. I, I'm sorry. I didn't. I didn't really think that through. No, really. But it's cool. Everything's great. Everything's fine. We're we're very we're great. We're fine. I need a drink too. I already shared my whiskey with you, man. You dropped a painting on me. Mom, I'm sorry about that. It's technically, if, if we believe the librarian, it's Daphne's whiskey, and I don't, I think we should just waste all of it then for her, because I'm not really a fan. I like this plan. Let's do it. Let's get hammered. Are there windows in this billiards room? Uh, no, there are no windows in this billiards room. No. Daphne, you return to the basement yes. with the combination. You feel it's the combination. Mm -hmm. And you begin subtly playing back and forth with the knob on the safe. Mm -hmm. uh, with each addition of the number, you feel more and more secure that this is the combination. Yeah. And when you're done, you open the safe. Yeah. You wrench on the handle and pull it open. When you pull open the safe door inside, there are a stack, likely two and a half to three feet high, of shining bars that are about say two or three inches high by about six to eight inches long mm -hmm. and they look to be made of gold. Okay. On the back of the safe wall there's a face. <laughs> Whose face? It's an etching. Okay. It's an etching. It looks like the woman you saw on the portrait of stairs. Oh. Well, the one, the one you saw in the book. You went upstairs yeah. to the main. Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's right. Uh, no, I go, I go check it out. I want to get closer to that and check it out. Okay. You get closer and you check it out and you realize that this is this has got to be your grandmother. Yeah. Well, that makes sense. They wanted me to be here. It did. She wanted me to be here. And those other two seem to have fucked off. This is top shelf stuff. So, I, I win. Um... <laughs> <laughs> And, well, I mean, I need to find proof, though, that I'm... You do. That's the problem. You do. Did you all say something about a cure? <laughs> okay. There is no cure. I didn't take a lot of notes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> more than I usually do. <laughs> right. Um, oh, yeah, no, so is there, are there any books in here, like records? Yeah. Um, anything like that, because that's when I'm going to start going through to find the birth, birth records, death records, if this is like the place where they keep them safe, so to prove you that find, this is mine. You find a scroll inside this, this safe. Mm -hmm. It is thick, and when you unfurl it, you see a complete DeWerk family tree. <laughs> it traces the lineage all the way back from you know the early... 1700s or so, all the way to the present day mm -hmm. of Jeremy DeWart's. Uh, he's basically the last on the official list, and you see that there are new lines that have been marked out, one of which seems to line up specifically with your grandmother. This is the evidence that you need to take to the state. This is it. Yeah. Uh, you hear a voice from somewhere around you, mm -hmm. a feminine voice that says, Child, I'm going to send them back to you. Okay. Deal with them. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so, back in the other space, uh, there's a, a clicking that picks up in the back of your ears, just here on the upper part of your ears, a clicking. There's a, another, it's not the sink, Mac. It's not the sink, it's a sharper sound than that. It's sharper and it's insistent and it draws your attention without fail. And that is the clicking of heels on a hardwood floor, which become a pounding, thundering sound as they begin to get closer and closer to so the building. scary. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Do you check bottles by that? Oh, I would assume so. One for each hand, right? <laughs> Do I still have my vase <laughs> under my arms? Yes, but, but somehow, somehow you've lost the silver teapot. <laughs> That's fine. I just filled vase vase with booze. <laughs> okay. Hey Mac, I'm sorry. Is not enough. I'm sorry I stopped you from stabbing her eyes out. I'm gonna run back in that closet. 
He's going to run back to the comfort of the hands. The comfort <laughs> of the hands closet. Okay. The handsy closet's the best thing I've ever seen in a golf cool computer game. <laughs> <laughs> you open up the closet, the closet full of hands. It yeah, accepts man. you as one of its own. <laughs> um, as it does so, I would like you to make a constitutional. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow, 11. 11, huh? That one's good. Uh, so the hands grab you, and this time it's not as comforting as you were. Hey, wait, 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 wait. It's, it's me, it's me, it's, it's me. Everything, anything but comforting. Uh, the hands slowly and inexorably begin to pull at your skin. Mac, they, I made a mistake. They grab your arms. Mac. They seem to be trying to pull you apart. That's right. <laughs> I mean, it's definitely not friendly. Well, I'm going to have to fight against that. I think, I think you probably will. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you want, strength or fight? No, I think this is a fight back challenge okay. for sure. And I'm going to make a, um, we'll just say with advantage, hands roll. Mac, they changed their mind. They changed their mind, Mac. I, I just got a ladle and I'm pulling whiskey out of the vase and just drinking it. Mac, it really hurts. 70. It's a 70, Mac. That's really hot. <laughs> Mac, Mac. Oh, Mac. Oh, no. so, I thought you were 45, man. <laughs> The door to the billiard room blasts open, and in her most imperious form, Daphne's grandmother is standing there, swelling with this sort of power, it's intimidation, and you being, you know, a fairly well Catholic raised child, immediately become submissive because <laughs> you know you've done wrong. You can feel the fact that she knows you've done something wrong and the weight of the guilt lays upon your shoulders without error. Uh, for you, detective, a sadder tale. And that oh, no. is the six that I rolled on my, on my fight roll. Um, and I'm going to deal you nine points of damage from the hands ripping your flesh apart. Ooh. So this is pulp, right? I can use all of my... Uh, <laughs> nope, this is not pulp. I'm at, but um, you are. Yeah, I'm at minus one. Yeah, and it's a major wound as well. Uh, so, the closet bleeds for a little while, but that's not important at all, Mac. What's important is, is that the lady of the house would like you to leave. She makes it very clear. I don't know where to go, ma'am. I just came in through a painting. Do I go back out that way? Clutching my vase full of whiskey. <laughs> Put that down. Out. It's not even... A suggestion. Mm -hmm. It's an order. And just walk out, stumble rather, out, just like, I don't know where the exit, but I, oh, just go in. You go in back through the kitchen and sort of waddle your way through the, the <laughs> end point of the kitchen, bumping into a few servants who actually tip over a, a big mixing bowl that has a bunch of flour in it, and you stumble back into the music room. And when you get back into the music room, all the lights are off, everything is dark, the wood has rotted beneath your feet, and this is the music room as you remember it before. Well, she said to go. I'm gonna go. Daphne, you come upstairs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you see Mac stumble through the music room back towards the foyer. You can hear <laughs> his footsteps, and likely a few hiccups mm -hmm. as a uh, I imagine the smell kind of wafts through first. <laughs> Can I have how brought I one of the gold bars with me? Yeah, sure. I have okay. a problem with cool. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> Matt, look what I found. Shiny. It's so shiny. Come here, come closer. It's so shiny. What about a shiny thing? I want to bludgeon Mac to death <laughs> with a gold bar, which is like candy. Just like candy dangling in front of him. Certainly. Uh, I think that it's a fantastic way mm -hmm. uh, to see Mac to whatever lies beyond the arms of the angel. Um, <laughs> I, I do think we should have a fighting brawl role for okay. it. Okay. Um, but you are going to be at advantage because Mac is, is so seriously drunk. inebriated. Yeah. Still didn't give but anyone any combat skills. Yeah, <laughs> I have advantage on my dodge with the way I'm no, aiming. No, no, no. 65, nope. Well, that's not good. That's right. Oh, wait, I just rolled a d10. Yeah. 
That's an 86 and a 96. That's fantastic. You swing and you misjudge the weight of a gold bar badly, uh, which crashes through the front window just beyond. I'm just gonna go. So, thanks. Okay, we'll see you that way. Okay. And I'm gonna start staggering out the, towards the yeah, door. Yeah, yeah, I don't even yeah. realize what she was doing. No, of course not. <laughs> no, you eat it on the front steps though. Yeah. You yeah. fall badly, oh. and then to drag yourself with the gravel until you can get up. I need a nap. Daphne, the house accepts you as its Thank new God. and true owner. Mm -hmm. And that is where we're going to end the tale of the door <laughs> house today. So thank you so much for joining us.